very much. Honorable Laureate, our colleagues, Publisher of Vocalis, very nice to have you, and uh, friends and guests. Uh, Dr. Yunus, you always remind me of the early birds who sing when it is dawn uh, to proclaim that the sun is going to rise. They're going to have a good day. You have been singing for us to believe that poverty can be reduced or can even be sent to museum. That is a great hope. You have made us believe in ourselves and we can do it. You remind me of two other Nobel laureates. The one who visited Stockholm 90 years before, uh, he got the prize in 13, but didn't come before 21. Visited twice. We have visited many more times. And hopefully, that will continue. And then, too, I think the top Nobel Prize laureates think in the same way. Because when I see these three from our continent, the true Nobel laureates, because those who get the prize in accordance with the will of the Nobel. Tagore got it and he had a philosophy that is in common with yours. He came here to rectify human souls, to join people, to, to join individuals. And you have come with a social business, a model, again, to join the rich and the poor. Another Nobel laureate, Mr. Salam, Prof. Salam from Pakistan, a physicist, he said, the rich and the poor, the greatest difference is not whether you have a resource or not. It is the access to technology, access to engineering and knowledge. And you have been doing the same, bringing technology to the village, bringing technology to the poor to change their life, to make them comfortable. You have set up numerous companies, Grammy Phone, Grammy Communication, Grammy Software, programming solutions, all this technology you are bringing to the village to empower them. And that impressed us, and we from the Royal Institute of Technology approached you to work in Bangladesh in that line. I was very proud to have the most entrepreneurial professor from KTH, Professor Björn Hershon, who is now running a billion dollar project in Africa. He visited Bangladesh, he visited the rural places, he saw how your grabbing health, Kollan, looking after the health care facility. He was very inspired, and he made me believe that we can go for this project. And we have come from the language. So we are applying information and communication technology, because computers have become very cheap, internet is available, Bangladesh is a flat, small country. My colleague from Finland, who comes from Nokia, a village Nokia, a biomedical engineering expert at the Karolinska Hospital. He was visiting villages in Bangladesh and he was always connected. He said, not even in Finland I'm connected. So, so Bangladesh has a very good connection, thanks to Grameen Phone that you have pioneered. And we have enormous opportunities to apply ICT to solve our healthcare problems, to solve our education problems, because we don't have good doctors and good teachers to teach the people in the village. So today I'll not talk uh, much, I'll just tell you what we have done. A collaboration between KTH and Grammy Communication. Jointly, we bring the medical experts to the village, we bring the best teachers to the village. Today, I'm sitting at home in Stockholm or at office teaching in Bangladesh, the village school children and teachers. We have doctors working here, giving diagnostic consultancy to the patients or from Dhaka. And this can be done, we are doing it, and I encourage you to do the same thing in your village, or your place of origin. So, uh, I will just show what we have done. We have the lab, uh, ICT lab for e-learning. We have telemedicine center, where you see the doctors are giving consultancy. We have a medical expert from Dhaka who is talking directly to the patient and having communication and giving the diagnostic consultation. We are also teaching the teachers and healthcare providers in the village. 
We are having a lot of seminars, awareness creation seminars, uh, capacity building seminars, workshops. And we are very much focusing on the women, the pregnant women, giving them right content, relevant content, a content in a way they can perceive in uh, audiovisual format, voice, picture. We are now having some students working to make short uh, YouTube programs for awareness creation of the pregnant mothers, mothers of the infants. We are collaborating with Buet, as uh, Professor uh, Ellenson mentioned, to start biomedical engineering, bringing technology to for safe use of uh, medical uh, intervention. Uh, and actually, today, it is possible to share technology. It is possible to break technology, knowledge engineering. Because as you know, for various reasons, doctors, good doctors, good teachers, they don't want to work in the village, mm -hmm. for, for obvious reasons. We need to not bring them physically, but their knowledge. And that is possible. And we are doing it, and uh, more of this will be published. Hey, you see, Professor Bjorn Persson, Grameen Phone, Grameen Communication, Red Cross, and Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University website. So we are jointly collaborating to solve these problems. And we thank uh, Grameen Communication, Nazneen and her team for help being very helpful to, to help us to implement the project. And please convey our gratitude and thanks to, 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 to Grameen Communication. Now, I will request Professor Bjorn Hoshan to tell us how you see these ICT tools being used globally and what opportunities the developing countries have and share us share with us your experience in Africa. Thank you very much. And I'll be brief. Uh, time is flying uh, when you're busy and uh, I have for the last decade been involved in uh, development cooperation which is a serious business. So uh, I realize it's actually nine years ago we met uh, first when uh, Mana brought me to, to Bangladesh. And uh, uh, as Mana said, we, I was very inspired by the environment. Uh, and uh, I'm a telecommunications uh, professor. Uh, and I soon realized, however, that Bangladesh has one asset which uh, um, which makes it somewhat easier uh, than uh, uh, many other parts of the world, uh, especially Africa. I was brought to Africa by my students. And the asset I refer to is uh, your part of it. Uh, the most, or at least one of the few and most uh, populated areas in the world. And from a telecommunications point of view, this is what matters. Uh, the telecom operators uh, look very much at population density because uh, the more customers you can get per square meter, the cheaper it is to, uh, to invest. And I know that uh, the marriage between Grameen Phone and uh, Telenor has... Uh, has Uh, sometimes been stormy. Uh, it has uh, been all over the news sometimes, and uh, <laughs> Yes, the uh, long life has uh, taught me that uh, you should always test well ahead before you go into situations like this. Um, where was I? Yes, uh, population density uh, and Telenor, right. And uh, uh, you have been very successful there. Uh, and uh, I would love to see what we can do together in Africa. Uh, because Africa is a totally different situation. Uh, you have your fiber infrastructure uh, covering uh, Bangladesh. Uh, the uh, uh, the African community is still uh, satellite-based. Although recently uh, the submarine cables have connected Africa to other parts of the world, uh, 
uh, it has been a waiting game. Seeing is believing, and no one really started to think about how to get to the beach before they actually saw the cables coming to the beach. So uh, now it's the national backbones that are being rolled out. And they are being rolled out, but it takes time. And of course, when the national backbones are rolled out, it's the access networks and the vast mile networks and uh, uh, a lot of work ahead. So it will take at least a dec another decade before Africa is where, uh, where Bangladesh is now. And uh, uh, there will be a need of uh, a million uh, engineers to make that happen. Uh, and so it's the uh, demand rolls in like a tsunami over Africa now when they start uh, coming. And uh, it will take more than a, uh, a year, uh, normally about four or five years, to uh, get the skilled uh, people out on the uh, labor market. So that is a challenge uh, for them. We had exactly the same situation here in Sweden in, uh, some uh, 30 years ago. And uh, I try to convince the operators not to steal the teachers because then they wouldn't get any uh, more students. But they only laughed at me and said that we have to take them before someone else does. So that is a challenge. The, uh, uh, to speed things up, the uh, thing that uh, uh, we are discussing and that I have proposed to the UN Broadband Commission that. Uh, a recent world well, it was formed a year ago and is now starting uh, to uh, to look into the developing regions that are the most uh, challenging and Africa is certainly one of them to start uh, not a, a last mile initiative but a first mile initiative because when the uh, uh, connectivity comes rolling out, and I guess uh, you can witness a bit about that also. Although mobile phones, which you started with, are the most uh, 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 easy technologies to get used because you only need to talk. So, as long as you can talk, you can use it. And the uh, business models and the supply chain are all very efficient uh, to make this happen. Now, it's uh, 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 broadband and uh, broadband is uh, more of a challenge both, both from a te technology point of view, supply chain point of view, from a user point of view and that's why uh, the first mile uh, initiative is important. Uh, rather than sitting waiting for the last mile to come in, the communities could start uh, uh, local networks, start communicating locally uh, you don't have to be connected to the internet to communicate. There are, um, there are local needs and you can fly in local content anyway. I uh, uh, worked even before going to Bangladesh, I worked a bit in Laos. And they already at the time got a, uh, this was in 2000, well it was about the same time, 2002. Uh, they had a, a fiber network donated to us. But they used it to connect 9.6, well, 2.4, I think it was at the time, kiloboard models. Because they didn't realize that uh, they could do broadband uh, services locally. Uh, uh, and they didn't want to put too much strain on, the, on their uh, uh, narrowband connection. So that is very much what, uh, what we are up to now. And uh, uh, I, I have heard that Pyramid uh, is uh, present on African soil. So uh, that would be interesting to uh, explore. And it's very nice to meet you again. Thank you. Thank you. I should also mention that we enjoyed your, uh, your contributions to Stockholm Challenge.